Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to talk about water as being both an acid and a base. A substance is said to be amphoteric if it can behave either as an acid or as a base. And water is the most common amphoteric substance there is. And we can see this clearly in the ionization of water, which involves the transfer of a proton from one water molecule to another to produce a hydroxide ion and a hydronium ion. So let's take a look at an example here. Let's suppose we have a beaker of water. So we have some water right here. And this, this can be representative of any quantity, or any quantity of water. It can be a beaker of water, or a glass of water, or a bathtub of water, or a lake of water. It doesn't really matter. All right, so let's take a look at what happens on a microscopic level when we have a container of water. What ends up happening is that some of these water molecules act as an acid and some of these water molecules act as a base and according to the brunstead lowry model acids donate H plus or protons and bases accept H plus or accept protons so some of these water molecules are going to end up donating H plus ions or protons to other water molecules so some of these water molecules in this beaker right here are going to act as an acid and donate H+, and some of them are going to act as a base and accept H+. So let's think about it this way. Here's our little water molecule right here, and here are our hydrogens. We have oxygen and two hydrogens. And so let's think about this. If some of these water molecules here are going to donate an H+, what ends up happening is that this H+, gets donated to this other water molecule right next to it. Okay, So these water molecules here are acting as an acid as they donate H+, and these water molecules right here are acting as a base as they accept H+. And so what we end up having, if we think about it here, is that when this donates an H+, to this right here, we end up having this substance right here, H3O+, where we have one oxygen and three hydrogens here. And if this guy right here loses an H+, plus, what we'll end up having is this substance right here. If we get rid of this, we will end up having OH-. Okay? So, water is said to be amphoteric. And that means that some of these water molecules are going to donate H+, plus, and some of them are going to accept H+. Plus. Now, you might be saying to yourself, wait a second. You mean to tell me that when uh, I drink some water from a cup or a glass, that what I'm actually drinking are some hydronium ions and some hydroxide ions? And the answer to that is yes, you are in fact drinking a very small quantity of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions. In fact, what you need to know is that the H3O plus concentration, anytime you see these brackets right here, these brackets stand for the concentration of that solute in water. And anytime we have H3O plus, we typically shorten this down to just H+. Plus. So in any amount of water, the concentration of hydrogen ions is going to be equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter. So we have a very small amount of hydrogen ions that are in this water, and we also have a very small amount of hydroxide ions that are in this water as well, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7. So why is it then that we have such a small amount of these two ions that are floating around in this water when this reaction here clearly shows the formation of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions? Well, what ends up happening also is that this hydronium here is going to donate an H plus to this hydroxide right here. And when that donates the H plus to the OH minus, it produces water over here. And when this hydronium loses an H plus, it produces water over here. So there's a reverse reaction that is also taking place. And in fact, it's this re reverse reaction that tends to happen more frequently than the reaction going this way. And that is why when we drink a glass of water, we're mostly drinking water and we are consuming very small quantities of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So let's take a look at the ion product constant and apply this concept to calculating the hydrogen ion concentration and hydroxide ion concentrations of different solutions. All right, so here's our uh, chemical equation from the slide that preceded this slide where water is reacting to form hydronium and hydroxide 
and hydronium and hydroxide are uh, reacting to form water. And what you, didn't, what you need to know is that in any quantity of water, like we just said, at 25 degrees Celsius or room temperature, the hydrogen ion concentration is going to be equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th moles per liter. And the OH minus concentration will also be equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter in any amount of water. So it doesn't matter the amount. This is a concentration. At 25 degrees Celsius, if we take a look at this beaker of water right here, there's going to be this many uh, or this concentration of hydrogen ions and this concentration of hydroxide ions. And if we multiply these two together, what we end up with is something called the ion product constant. If I take 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th times 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th, I will get 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th, and this is called the ion product constant. And here's how it works. In any aqueous solution, the concentration of hydrogen ions times the concentration of hydroxide ions always equals this right here, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. This is known as the ion product constant, or Kw. So if we think about it this way, if you increase the amount of, it's supposed to be an arrow here, if we increase the amount of hydrogen ions in a solution, then that must mean that the concentration of hydroxide ions is decreasing. Furthermore, if we increase the amount of hydroxide ions, then the amount of hydrogen ions will decrease in that solution. So keep in mind that in any aqueous solution at 25 degrees Celsius, the hydrogen ion concentration times the OH minus concentration will always equal this magic number. Furthermore, if the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution is greater than the hydroxide ion concentration, the solution is said to be acidic. If the OH minus concentration is greater than the hydrogen ion concentration, then the solution is alkaline or basic. And if the hydrogen ion concentration equals the OH minus concentration, then the solution is neutral. So let's apply these concepts to some sample problems. All right, so in this first example, it says to calculate the hydrogen ion concentration of an aqueous solution, if the hydroxide ion concentration equals 2.543 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter, and then you need to determine if the solution is acidic, uh, alkaline, or neutral. And we're going to assume this all happens at 25 degrees Celsius. So let's take a look here. In this problem, we know that at 25 degrees Celsius, the H plus concentration times the OH minus concentration or uh, OH minus concentration will always equal 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. And we typically leave the unit off here. You'll notice there is no unit attached. We typically leave it off. And in this problem here, it looks like we're asked to determine, if we read, we need to determine the H plus concentration of this solution. Okay, so to get the H plus concentration of this solution, what we're going to do is we need to divide both sides by OH minus. If we divide both sides by OH minus, they will cancel out here. And so the formula that we're going to use is that H plus concentration equals 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by the OH minus concentration. So we have 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. And we're going to end up dividing by the OH minus concentration, which it tells us right here is this, 2.543. times 10 to the negative fourth. And so we'll get our calculator out. And we end up with 3.932 times 10 to the negative 11th moles per liter. Okay, so it looks like the hydrogen ion concentration is going to be this. So now the question says, is the solution acidic, basic, or neutral? So let's take a look. What we need to figure out is that this is H plus right here. This is the H plus concentration. And if you take a look, the OH minus concentration is this right here. It's 2.543 times 10 to the negative fourth. So which is a bigger number? Well, this is a way bigger number than this right here. 10 to the negative fourth is a much larger number 
than this number right here. So you have more OH minus than H plus. And it says right here, anytime you have more OH minus than H plus, the solution is going to be a base. So this will be a base. The solution is basic in nature. So that's how you do example problem number one. Let's take a look at another example problem. All right, an example problem number two. It says calculate the OH minus concentration of an aqueous solution if the H plus concentration is 4.239 times 10 to the negative second moles per liter. And determine if the solution is acidic, alkaline, or neutral. We'll assume this all happens at 25 degrees Celsius. All right, so in this problem here, we're asked to calculate the OH minus concentration. So we know that once again the H plus concentration times the OH minus concentration is going to be equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th every single time. And in this problem here it looks like we're asked to solve for OH minus. So the way that we uh, get OH minus all by itself on one side of the equal sign is to get rid of H plus by dividing both sides by it. If we do that, they'll cancel here. And so the OH minus concentration is going to equal the ion product constant divided by H plus. So we'll take 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. And we're going to divide it by whatever the H plus concentration is. And it tells us the H plus concentration is right here. 4.239 times 10 to the negative 2. So we'll put this in our calculator. And we're going to end up with 2.359 times 10 to the negative 13th. Moles per liter. So the OH minus concentration of this solution is going to be this right here. And so now it says to determine if the solution is acidic, alkaline, or neutral, let's take a look at which is a bigger number. This is 10 to the negative 2 for H+. Plus. And this is going to be, let's see here, 10 to the negative 13 for OH minus. So if we take a look here, H plus is definitely bigger than OH minus. And anytime H plus is bigger than OH minus, the solution is going to be acidic. So this solution will be acidic. All right, let's take a look at another problem. All right, in this problem here, it says a solution's hydrogen ion concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th moles per liter. You're being asked to determine the OH minus concentration of the solution. You're assuming that this is at 25 degrees Celsius. And then you need to tell if it's acidic, alkaline, or neutral. So in this problem here, once again, you know that the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution times the OH minus concentration of an aqueous solution is always going to equal 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. You could put a capital M there or not. I'll go ahead and leave it off. So what we're trying to find in this problem is we're asked to determine the OH minus concentration. So to do that, we'll have to get rid of H plus from this side by dividing by it. We'll divide by it right here. They'll cancel. And so to get the OH minus concentration, we take 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th and divide it by the hydrogen ion concentration. So we'll take 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th, this should say, sorry, 10 to the negative 14th. And we're going to divide this by hydrogen ion concentration, which is this right here. And we should end up with 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th. So our hydroxide ion concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th. And our hydrogen ion concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th. So if we take a look here, they equal each other. Anytime that happens, the solution is going to be neutral. All right, so hopefully you understand how to calculate hydrogen ion concentrations, uh, uh, hydroxide ion concentrations, and hopefully now you can determine if a solution is acidic, basic, or neutral. And I hope this was helpful.